Right, so here's an issue. You heard about sargassum and how this is taking over the world. If you go to our harbors um, since 2001 or 2003 locally, 2006, you'll find Angeria, that one that's in your miso soup that I told you you can go eat if you want to. Um, I, re I really wouldn't harvest it out of our harbors. <laughs> Channel Islands Harbor might be okay, but I don't know if I really quite advise that. Um, and so we're trying to deal with, here we just found it on Anacapa Island this last year. It's the first time uh, we've seen it out there, at least on the national substrate. And there are some organizations, uh, federal and even, even local, that are questioning, well, should we try and do, uh, do a removal experiment or, or, or um, eradication um, attempt? Um, not control, but actually eradicate it, all right? And so I'm going to go through some pros and the cons, and we're going to take a vote at the end. And what I, I think pretty seriously about this, I'm kind of curious what your opinion is. If you think that it would be worthwhile to spend millions of dollars to try and, try and eradicate this, which is um, probably going to be a very unusual case if we can eradicate it, but it's still a possibility. Or if you think that money is best better spent on things like education and outreach and whatnot. And so those will be sort of the questions I'll ask you. I might refine it a little bit. So um, in uh, 2009, there was a paper published. Um, I'm going to fix my ears and see. Um, Gosh, what year was it? Seen it? It'll, it'll show up in another one. But um, Andaria was moving up and down the coast here since 2001 in all the harbors. It made it out to Catalina, I think, in 2000. Was it safe here? 2001. Yeah, it was, uh, oh, 2004. 2004. Yeah, it'll, it'll show up in my other chart. I'm, I'm, I forget years. So that's what happens to me. Yeah, past age 20, I think. But um, forget everything else, year wise. Or do 27 years of monitoring. I don't know what year is next. Um, but then it made it out to Anacapa this last year, and I'll show you that scenario. Marine invasives um, are becoming more and more of an issue worldwide. Um, there's these hot spots, typically in these cooler water regions where there's a lot of port exchange, so a lot of shipping going on. Ships are what move most of our invasive species. Um, and here's the sort of the density um, there. Here is um, mo most non native uh, marine species um, in Western North America. Um, come to California first, and that's again because we have all these huge ports from um, Japan and from China that come to San Francisco and Los Angeles, and then that stuff gets shipped all around the country. So these are the main ports of entry for all these. 79% uh, of, of, of um, the species on the West Coast were found in California. Um, most are protected waterways, not open coast. So if you asked me 10 years ago if I thought that marine invasives were going to be a problem at the Channel Islands, I would have been in a denial phase, and now they're not going to be a problem. Most of those species come from these bays and estuaries, and they come and they stay in our bays and estuaries, and they're not open coast species like sargassum hornorite. All right, I don't know why I thought that, but we're always in denial. So this is again a shifting baseline. I, I, I tell you to try and keep an open mind. <laughs> don't think that you have the world figured out that these won't become a problem. Just sure enough, it became a problem. Um, so here's what it looks like in the harbors. Um, it's got this really distinct midrib, and it's got this really distinct reproductive. It's, it's um, really easy to find the stuff. There's a boat on Channel Islands Harbor. There's a reproductive harp. Um, Mokami is its Japanese name. And again, it's in the miso soup. Um, in 2016, this, this last um, June, we found it here at one of our permanent monitoring sites. There's our actual transect tape here, and here's an adult plant growing. Um, and then we did some surveys soon afterward, and I'll show you that. So this is the first time it's been seen live within the park. Um, there's been a lots of um, uh, eradication efforts in the harbors and whatnot. But the concerns and impacts are it's on the list of the, the um, worst invaders list for marine species. I'm not so sure that is, the research I did, I'm not so sure that's validated, but that's, it's still on the, the one of the lists for worst invaders. And it's spreading all over the world. I'll show you a chart on that pretty soon. Uh, may change native ecosystems, competition with other species. Uh, once established at islands, the possibilities of further spread are enormous. Okay. Now, we'll go over. There's, uh, it's uh, prolific via human transport. So it's humans that are transporting this. So sargassum hornorite, that other species, has air bladders. It gets dislodged. It floats around the surface, and it's spread by its own self. And initially got here by humans. This algae doesn't have a air bladder. It dies, it falls on the ground, its spores probably only disperse on the order of hundreds of meters per year at the most, but it attaches itself to vessels. And that's how we've moved it all over California and all over the world relatively quickly. Okay. Um, 
Uh, it's intertidal at 25 meters depth to 75 feet. Um, high tolerance for turbine nutrient rich water, like harbors um, and the islands. Broad temperature range, um, it's optimal, it's 10 to 20 degrees C, which is exactly where we're at at the Channel Islands. Um, local dispersal, less visibly removed by a vector. So it's really different than Sargas, let me just explain that. Here's this life cycle. Um, you essentially have the reproductive, it um, puts out spores, you get these gametophytes. Um, sorry. Reproductive, you get the zoospores and the um, young zoospites, which are in the gametophytes. The gametophytes can remain dormant for up to two years. So you may go and take all the adult plants, think you've removed them all, and then you come back two years later and you've got plants. So, it's, and you can't see these. It's hard enough for people to identify a small plant. People are only identifying these mature plants with the reproductive areas. So here's where um, the, uh, the potential distribution for an area and um, the little areas that it is at now are the whole, all the squares. So it introduces in black. Um, its native range is, is the star there in Asia. Um, uh, introduced and it becomes an annual species is the red squares and the blue is introduced and year round it grows. So we're hoping that it's an annual species here. It doesn't grow year round. It's more of a cyclical species. That's what it tends to do in our harbors. But we're in that temperature range where it can go either direction and nobody really knows at this point. All right. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Tasmania. I'm going to talk a little about New Zealand actually. And the Channel Islands. I just realized that it was, I mislabeled that for a talk I gave a month ago. I'm not sure how I did that, but anyways. <laughs> um, but the habitat in Tasmania and New Zealand and the Channel Islands is all very similar. Um, here's Sargassum horneri. I already showed you this. This is what um, horneri and Angaria distribution is along the coast. They were both introduced to Long Beach Harbor, as best we know, in 2000 and in 2003. So the, the, um, the circles are uh, Sargassum. Horneri, the squares are, I'm uh, oh, sorry, yeah, the circles are Hertzogas Horneri, and the squares are in the area. Um, so, similar introduction, but really different in how they move. Sargas and Horneri is everywhere. Um, and Daria is just on um, Catalina and Anacapa, but always at the Bodega Bay for Andaria. And you can see the progression of the harbors was relatively quick. By 2001, it already made it to, to Monterey from 2000. It took one year to get from Long Beach to Monterey. So, the potential from this vessel vector is really, really quick. Um, here's um, Horneri, so you saw this already, this was the distribution of Horneri 2003, boom, spread really quick, all right? So I'm going to show you now the same thing for Andaria, 2001 was, it, or 2000 was introduced, 2000 for Oxar, this is just the local area, 2001, 2008, it took a few years to get to Channel Islands, nobody knows why, okay, but it did. And then ANCAP in 2016, in one, in one location, all right? Um, the first time I saw it at the Channel Islands was on the sanctuary vessel, the Shearwater. It went out there. Really? There lots of it in Santa Barbara Island. I looked at the bottom of the boat. There it is. Um, and then here's our boat, the Park Service boat getting pulled after sitting for too long. Luckily, it didn't go out to the island. But that's all the Sanderia. It only takes a, about a month or so for it to grow that big. So relatively fast growing. Luckily, we didn't take any of that out there. But you know, if it's growing on our well-maintained boats, there's plenty of people on the harbor that have it on their boats that are bringing it out to the islands when they go out. And again, those little tiny gametophytes can be this big and get dislodged, fall on the bottom, and then grow. Um, so education efforts in 2009, when we discovered this in 2008 in the harbor, I spent a year um, putting together just a little, uh, little tiny brochure on it. And then I had to contact the port district. And then I had to get these posted all over the harbor. It took me a ton of effort. To get, I'm the biologist. I'm not the education person. It took me a ton of effort to get these posted. They lasted about six months, and they were all taken down. Okay. These invasive species issues are not a one-time deal. They're an ongoing problem. Okay. They were taken and, down by the staff or by the Yeah, they were people. up there for so long. They got faded. They just got taken down. And so it takes people to put them up all the time, which I've got a lot of things to do. It's not high on my priority list, although I think it's important. And then in 2016, seven years later, we see it make, make it out to the islands. Okay. So we did the education effort. Here's where it was first found on a 100-meter-long transect. We did surveys here. We pretty much found it on this whole section of stretch here and this whole section of stretch here. We didn't see it here. So we're now talking about two and a half kilometer area is where I estimate it being. We've now had reports of it being found over, over here somewhere. So there's, I think, the whole side of, of West Anacapa Island, um, which is several miles long. So a relatively big area from 20 feet out to at least 55 feet. Okay, But not a whole lot of plants. So that's estimated about 9,000. Um, 
And then we made some additional surveys on September 12th, um, and we didn't find any in September. <coughs> so it had already died in Senest, it died off. So if you're gonna do a survey now, or in September, you don't see any, because it already died, it's an annual species. Um, so density of keyhole um, was, our, our modern site was 0.26 per square meter, so a fair number, um, not insignificant. Um, and I estimate there were 9,000 plants. Um, and this is 5, 000, five times the total that were removed in Sunday Cove in, um, in New Zealand, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So that's the one successful, they think, successful place they've done an eradication effort. And this has been tried, eradication has been tried all over the world. There's one other successful case on a shipwreck in Australia where they actually tented the entire shipwreck and they pumped in hot water mm. and killed it. So a little about the invasion curve. Um, this is how invasive species work. Prevention, of course, is your best way. You prevent them from coming here in the first place. Then you have a small number of localized populations. You actually have a chance for eradication. This is where we think we are at the Channel Islands. You have a small number, relatively small number, of a localized population that's not all over Anacap yet. Um, then the next set would be containment. Um, and then pretty much, if you're over here, you can't control them and it's just um, pretty much uh, protection of, of, or long-term management um, of the areas infested. So your only potential for eradication is where we are right now. So keep that in mind when I ask you that question. If we're gonna eradicate the species, we can't wait next year, can't wait two years from now. We have to start now before it spreads. Okay. Um, eradication control efforts, Santa Barbara Harbor failed, Monterey Harbor failed, all of that's failed, San Francisco failed, Button Shell Beach and Catalina failed, Big Glory Bay, New Zealand failed, Tasmania failed. There's a ton of other failures in the literature. What I discovered in researching about this topic, I'm calling up my friends in, in New Zealand and in Tasmania and in Australia, is nobody's sharing information internationally. Everybody is recreating the wheel in their own infested areas. It's amazing. We got the internet. You think that would like, <laughs> we, we actually would help us in communicating? I actually think in, in, in researching this topic, I think we're communicating less today because we're so busy answering emails that nobody's talking to each other in different parts of the world. It's crazy what technology is doing to us, even as a group and as a world, and how we communicate. It, it's actually a bit shocking. This was a, an amazing research project for me. So other examples, global communication. I don't know, good question. Okay? I haven't gotten on the phone with everywhere in Asia and all these other places um, I, where I don't have colleagues and I don't have contacts. Sunday Cove, New Zealand was just labeled as a success just this last year. They had a three-year eradication effort. I think we can talk about the next slide. Um, 2012 to 16, I just found out. So this number here, this cost for those years, I got out of newspaper articles because I couldn't find information. I just talked to somebody from New Zealand. He said that cost is way more than that, like three or four or five times that. Okay, This is a 0.25 square mile kilometer cove. I estimate that Anacapa is probably 10 times that magnitude and already three times the number of plants. We're talking about a much bigger problem. And this is a contained still water cove as opposed to Anacapa, where you have rough water, high currents, and a really different situation, okay? In uh, New Zealand, they took urchins. They dumped tons of urchins in this cove because urchins love this algae, okay? I don't think we're gonna be moving tons of urchins into the reserve at Anacapa Island to eat this algae. This will have a negative impact on a whole lot of other things. All right, so keep those things in mind when I ask you the question here in just a few minutes. Um, if, why we need to take action now, okay? So um, if, the, if the north side of West Santa Cap is the only location, that's the best we know, it's the only location where there is present, and there's a small chance of being able to eradicate it with an intensive, sustained, costly effort, all right? I'm in the works this week and next week to, to work out estimate. My guess is a three-year effort will probably cost somewhere in the excess of $5 million. Not a cheap effort to try and do this, okay? Um, some indication that um, different haplotypes may exist in New Zealand. All right, um, so that may be more depth to open coast. It should be evaluated. Uh, it may increase the motivation for an attempt at eradication. So it looks like there is some indication that this algae may have, it's sort of like uh, it's an island in Asia where things become a little bit more adapted. It may have had it spread. So along the coast of California, it's invaded all the harbors, okay? It came from a harbor initially, most likely. So you have a haplotype, you have a genetic variant that tends to do well in still water, okay? It hasn't ventured outside the harbors with the exception of that one little population at Catalina, and now this one small population at Anacapa. So the question is, is there a genetic difference in that group of animals that makes it do better in open <coughs> water coasts, okay? This is a slight possibility, we don't know. 
So we need to test for that. If that's the case, there may be a pretty good incentive to try and eradicate it. But this is a big unknown at this point, and it's only a small probability of it actually happening. But again, it's, it's a possibility. Make sense? All right. And then we want another um, um, thing is to prevent further spread, um, which if it's in one place, it will slowly move. It may stay on Anacapa because it's not, it may not move between the gaps unless it's transported by a boat. But you've got to remember, even if we eradicate it from Anacapa, all these boats in all the harbors, which is how it got there to begin with, still have a dairy on them. How are we going to prevent future introductions? So we obviously didn't succeed the first time. So how are we going to prevent future introductions? This is probably possibly the only, only, our, only be, our only and best chance at the islands to try and do this is now. So if you think it's feasible, this is our only chance of possibly doing it. If, and what we need to do now, um, at the very least, the north side of West Antarctica should be quarantined. So I'm trying to get fish and wildlife. There's lobster fishing all over that island. This algae loves to establish itself on artificial substrate, such as rocks and traps and whatnot. Those traps should not, I only have two minutes left. Bear with me. Yeah, where are you? I'm already over. Yeah. Are you guys good? Two more minutes? Yeah, go, 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 quick, go. Okay, okay. Um, so loves, I'm trying to get fish and wildlife to quarantine those traps. They won't do it, okay? Um, partner with other agencies that have marine invasive programs, such as Smithsonian and whatnot. Um, secure, sustain, adequate funding, and working on that through some oil contingency funds. Haplotype analysis, like I just explained, and then there's other components. No action and or can't control future invasions, so why bother? So again, all those boats are going to keep going out to the islands. Why bother to try and control this one? We can't prevent the future ones from happening. Okay, I propose instead of using that oil money, the oil spill money for eradication, to take that and you know how you get your DUI or your drunk driving information in your California license renewal every year? <laughs> I want something in your boating renewal every year that talks about invasive species and MPAs. So I'm trying to use that money as more of a prevention thing. Every year people will get targeted with that information because they're not seeing it today. Again, the harvest was taken down after about six months. So that's an alternative to use the funding for something like this. All right. So other opinions. In summary, this is for um, this is for Tasmania. Um, although there was quite a fuss when Nigeria first arrived in Tasmania, um, and local removal operations were enacted, they ended up a waste of time and effort. I don't think the species has much negative impact on local algae diversity being outcompeted by most local taxa. This is a very well-known biologist. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but essentially they thought eh, it's probably not as big of a problem as what people think. Okay, so um, this is really about the impacts and we'll be able to evaluate what the impacts are. So just to raise your hands for lack of time, um, how many of you think that we should, if we were to get, let's say, $5 million, how many, let's say it was $3 million, give the benefit of the doubt, how many of you think we should attempt to eradicate it, knowing the biology of it? Raise your hand. Hi. Okay. Hi. How many of you think that? That effort is not a good use of a good use of those funds, and we should use those funds somewhere else. Raise your hand. Okay, I'm in actually that department too. Okay, but there's no right or wrong answer on this. I'm getting pushed by management. So it's almost a 50-50, a little bit more for eradication, and I think that's because it's our only only chance to do it. Um, that will be. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's let's thank Dave. We can hang out and ask some questions. Let's thank Dave for coming on in.